So what is the contribution of Artisans towards the long-term roadmap to autonomous driving? What does Artisans do? In order to navigate safely, vehicles have to be able to see as humans, meaning building a three-dimensional reconstruction of its environment and localizing with high accuracy within that 3D reconstruction. So if you look at the data that Artisans products generate, you can see that there is a reconstruction of the environment, which doesn't have to be like you know it from Google Maps or other providers who build data for the human use case. This is data for robots to consume in order to navigate even without GPS. So your product is not hardware, it is the data itself you acquire via that hardware. Absolutely, it's data. So Till, um, there's this notion that in Germany kind of the startup world is lacking in adoption. Research is good, but adoption is lacking. Now, you not only apply AI, but you're also, mo also moving into a sector that is uh, targeted by some of the bigger names in the business, Google, Baidu and others. How dare you compete with them? What is your approach to tackling the big names in AI? Uh, Generally speaking, size in our sector and in our industry is not necessarily always an advantage. So many of the large industry players have failed to actually keep up uh, the pace towards, for example, full autonomy in autom automotive and robotics, as well as in uh, applying uh, AI in their products or st strategies. So we believe one of our advantages is that we're a very agile and extremely targeted company that has been able to deploy, or to tar first of all, hire top research and engineering talent. And we're bringing product to market, which is very interesting, firstly, for those big players to achieve their visions, as well as it is interesting um, for us as a young player in the space to also become a relevant player globally. So. At the end of the day, you are sitting um, here in Munich. Um, you haven't chosen Silicon Valley. You haven't uh, chosen some of the other tech hubs. Um, what is the reason? How did you attract 30, 40 um, engineers, some of the best in their field, to go to Munich to join you here? Munich is a very interesting also talent ecosystem, very uh, much also because of uh, the Technical University here, which is in the direct vicinity. Um, Daniel Kramers, our co-founder, is one of the globally leading professors and experts in the field. So we have also um, very close relationships to the world of academia. Uh, but in general, the um, interesting part is that uh, what drives the young tech talent today um, is basically three things. Firstly, I want, to uh, I want to change the world. I want to empower humans to uh, do new things. They want to do things that they can also see on the road next year and not wait five or seven years like they would have if they would join any of the large corporations, for example, in automotive. The second thing they tell us is, I want to work with the best people in the field. So this kind of collaboration with academia is extremely fruitful. And thirdly is, they want to work on the coolest and most up-to-date tech. And if you can provide this, you will get talent globally. Nowadays, people talk a lot about AI, artificial intelligence. They talk about the ethics behind it, about the technology, about deep learning. What do you think is one of the neglected topics we should talk more about specifically? How do you connect these types of AI-powered systems internationally? So can a car that will operate OK, safe, in Germany, operate in China? So how do we make sure that the standards in the industry enable the deployment of these new systems also internationally? I believe that's a very interesting topic.